Hello, everybody, and welcome to the episode of the play, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. Last time, we escaped the bombardment of Terrus, and also are now in Dantooine, our first new planet, and the Jedi Enclave. In this episode, we are going to be considered for Jedi training. So first up, let's do the mission and and card. No mission. Skill. Uh, let's get her or security. Trade injury, of course. Uh, awareness, skill mission, error. And now we see attack plus four. Nice. Again, it doesn't only work with your stealth; it works anytime the enemy is not attacking. So that works. This the same works same way in D and D, basically. So use it to your advantage. Next up is Karth. Trade injury feats. Uh, do, do, do. Let's get him power blast. Apparently, I hear that that power blast is the way to go for uh, for uh, well for uh, bah, for shooting characters. It basically is way better than any of the others. Though flurry, I hear is although because uh, rapid shot is bugged and doesn't actually work. Well, but I have a bug fix mod that fixes it. So so let's just add that beat and boop and get it set. There we are. So, let's go to the Jedi Council right away. Visit them right away for all our training. Oh, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. Let's give you that. Problem is, mission now looks like a total gig. Also, let's give you better armor, too. Okay, so you have the bond and energy suit. Let's give you, uh, yeah, it's just a better version of this. Okay. Can't get the Davix War suit or anything. Okay, get, let's, okay, Davix War suit I'm gonna give to, uh, to Candorus, what I usually give him to. What? So, I'll wait for that. Alright, let's go to the Jedi the Jedi Council and see them. There's for me. By the way, I have an hour and 30 minutes for two for total. Bastila has told us of a most unusual development. She claims you and she have shared a dream. A vision of Malak and Revan in the ancient ruins here on Dantooine. These ruins have long been known to us, but we believe them to be merely burial mounds. Perhaps they're more than we first suspected, if Revan and Malak found something there. Yes. They seem to be searching for someone. Oh, or... They seem to be searching for something. Bastila has described this shared dream to the Council in great detail. We feel it is more than a dream. It is a vision. The Force is acting through you, as it acts through Bastila. I trust in your greater wisdom. You and Bastila share a powerful connection to the Force, and each other. This is not unheard of. Connections often form between master and student, but rarely does a bond develop so quickly. Yeah, we're a Force dangers may lie ahead. We cannot ignore the destiny that has brought you and Bastila here to us, together. Are you saying I'm joined with her? Uh, you and she are linked, as is your fate to hers. Together, you two may be able to stop Darth Malak and the Sith. But do not let your head be filled with visions of glory and power. Such thoughts are the path to the dark side. The way of the light is long and difficult, as you must learn. Are you ready for such hardship? Yes. I am ready for whatever awaits me. Understand that there is little choice in this matter, for you or us. Across the galaxy, the number <laughs> of our <laughs> order is dwindled. Want to join. We have sent many Jedi to the quest of a way to thwart Malak's advance. Many have not returned. The Sith hunt also, the Jedi that down Yoda like is the only one of the species ambushing and assassinating our brothers wherever they are found. We fear it is only a matter of time until they discover even this hidden refuge. Other Jedi have fallen from the light and embraced the dark side, giving their allegiance to the Sith and Malak, their dark lord. Jedi turn to the dark side? The lure of the dark side is not easy to resist. Malak's power grows as more and more planets fall to his conquering armies. If Malak is not stopped, the Republic will fall, and the Jedi will be hunted to extinction. The galaxy will enter a time of darkness and tyranny, not seen for a thousand generations. The Council has decreed that you and Bastila must investigate the ancient ruins you dreamed of, once the Council deems you ready. Perhaps there you will find some clue, 
Some explanation of how Revan and Malak were corrupted. And perhaps there you shall find a way to stop them. I am ready now. I am ready now. I accept this mission. The Force flows through you like no student we have ever seen. But you are willful and headstrong. A dangerous combination. Before we send you to investigate the ruins, you must be trained in the ways of the Jedi, so that you can resist the darkness within yourself, within all of us. Otherwise, you are doomed to fail. As you wish, Master Vandar. We must begin your training at once. You have a destiny upon you that you must be prepared to face. The entire fate of the galaxy is upon you. I can only hope you will prove up to the test. Now, why I dislike the Rook path you is have not chosen in to this walk game. is difficult. The sequel. Intensive training will prepare you physically for the demands ah, of the order. Ah! Meditation will teach you to channel the power uh, of the Force. Oh, like this. To truly hmm. understand the way of the Jedi, knowledge. you must open your mind to knowledge. Seek wisdom in the teachings of the great masters of our order. Book. The Jedi is never alone. Others in the Order will always stand by you. You and Bastila share a special bond. Do not be afraid to turn to her when you need help in your training. The way of the Jedi is difficult. It requires great discipline. Yet even though you are a mere apprentice, your potential is unlimited and your progress amazing. In all my years, I have never seen one who has mastered the initial training so quickly. You have done in weeks what many cannot do in years. I am honored to welcome you fully into the Jedi Order. I am really angry right now. Soon your apprenticeship will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first, you must prove yourself worthy. What must I do to prove myself? Oh, actually, yeah. In the traditions and customs of our order, as handed down from master to pupil for a thousand generations, you must successfully complete three tests before you earn your place among the Jedi. I am ready for the test. What, kind of, what kind of tests are these? These tests will see if you have truly mastered the training you have been given, both mental and physical. Upon completing these tests, you will pass from apprentice to Padawan and join in the ranks of the Jedi. First, I will test your knowledge of the Jedi Code. These tenets must always guide your actions. In everything you do, you must always be conscious of their wisdom. You must prove you have a Jedi's understanding of the code. Return when you feel you are ready for this challenge. All right. And the items received, items lost. What do we receive? Ah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Didn't receive anything. Okay. Because <laughs> we lost right away. All right. So, oh, we had, don't have our swords equipped. I'll keep them unequipped for now. Why not? Basla. If you have questions, you should direct them toward the Jedi Council members. All right, then. Door right. Greetings, young apprentice. Let's go over have the Jedi Council. Have you come Council. seeking knowledge of the past? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Or so they say. As a chronicler of the Academy here on Dantooine, I feel it is my duty to share the history of our order with the newly initiated. Unfortunately, our recent history is one of tragedy and bloodshed. The Mandalorian Wars... The fall of Revan and Malak, the rise of the Sith. There are important lessons to be learned from these events, if we do not wish to repeat the mistakes of our past. Uh, all right. I am eager to learn, Master Dorak. Of course, I could not tell you the entire history of our order. The Jedi have existed for and thousands upon thousands of years. We are as old as the Republic itself. Like Instead, Python. I will begin 40 began, years ago with the, the war nine of planets Exar Kun. And the planet of like Tython. Malak and Revan, Exar Kun was a Jedi who fell to the dark side and led an army against the Jedi. I need the, the comics learn more about Exar, Exar Kun. Kun was and defeated, Drama. but the war left both the Republic and our own order severely weakened. For 20 years, we and struggled to rebuild, trying to erase the scars Pretty of good the terrible about conflict. The uh, about Exar Kun, who was the first wielder of the double-edged lightsaber, by the way. 
uh, created a lightsaber, was the first one to popularize it, and wielded a one-handed double-bladed lightsaber, which could extend and uh, its blade length and, like, other things, basically strike from really far away, and he was a master duelist before becoming a Sith Lord. Upon uh, becoming a Sith Lord, he hot, he uh, recruited El Ulic Keldroma uh, Droma as his Padawan, who, or as an apprentice, who eventually betrayed him. And, for he fell. Well, not really died. You see, he kind of st is technically still alive, up until the, uh, what is it called? The, uh, Yavin. Until Yavin 4. Uh, well, after the Battle of the Death Star. Heck, he, two. Heck, he, his ghost was a major problem in one of the novels for being eventually killed, uh, possessing one of his Padawans for being slain. So, eh, interesting. I actually do recommend reading the comics. They're pretty good. For, especially, like, the old, the ones before the Republic, but the history of the Jedi, they're pretty darn good. What does that have to do with Revan and Malak? All things in time. You shall learn that history is an intricate weaving of many events. No one thing can be understood True. without the proper context. Twenty years ago, the Mandalorians, aware that the Republic was in a weakened state, began conquering also, small the worlds on the outer rim. They were careful the, to choose only planets certain. outside the Republic's jurisdiction. After much debate, the Senate chose not to intervene. As long as the Mandalorians avoided planets that were members of the Republic itself, there would be no retaliation. Should have protected them. Well, you can hardly blame the Republic. The memory of war was fresh in everyone's mind. Nobody was eager to relive the horrors in a campaign against the Mandalorians. But in the end, it was unavoidable. The Mandalorians stockpiled resources from their conquered worlds, preparing for massive assault. Seven years ago, they launched a simultaneous attack in three separate sectors of Republic space. The Senate had no choice but to retaliate with the entire Republic fleet. The Mandalorian Wars had begun. Did the Jedi join in? The Republic petitioned the Jedi Council for aid, but there were many factors to consider before we allowed ourselves to be drawn into another conflict so soon after the war with Exar Kun. While the Jedi Council preached patience, there were many among our order who were eager for us to join the battle. Two young knights in particular demanded immediate action, Revan and Malak. They rallied many of the Jedi to their cause, and against the wishes of their masters, the joined the Republic novels. fleet battling the Mandalorians. Revan was a brilliant military leader, and the Republic fleet began to win victory after victory. Four years ago, the Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. Due to many, due to war crimes. So, Revan did the right thing? No one is denying that Revan was one of the keys to defeating the Mandalorians. But something happened out there on the Outer Rim. Instead of returning after the war's end, the ships under Revan's command went deep into unexplored space. They claimed to be searching for the last remnants of the Mandalorian fleet. All contact was lost. For many months, it was assumed some great disaster had befallen the entire fleet. Everyone thought they were dead. There were unsubstantiated rumors of Revan and Malak being seen on a number of different planets during these months. Scattered sightings that were never confirmed. Where did they disappear to? Perhaps they simply went far beyond the edges of Republic space. Maybe they found previously undiscovered hyperspace routes to the ends of the galaxy. Nobody knows for certain. Three years ago, Revan and Malak returned at the head of a massive invasion fleet. Revan had assumed the title of Sith Lord. The hero had become a conqueror. Where did Revan get all the ships of the Sith fleet? Some of the ships in the Sith fleet are those that were under Revan's command during the Mandalorian Wars. But many more are of an alien design we've never seen before. The source of this massive fleet is one of the many things about the Sith we cannot explain. It seems impossible to have created it in such a short time, yet we cannot deny its existence. The source of the Sith soldiers is unfortunately much easier to understand. Initially, the bulk of the force were former Republic soldiers but where did who had the British under accent come With from? each conquest, thousands more flocked to join the invaders, swelling their numbers. Even many of our own order have betrayed us. Lured by Sith promises of riches and power. Sorry, I'm yummy on a lot. 
So what happened next? For two years, the Sith were more. all but invincible. Fortunately, Bastila and her battle yeah, meditation allowed the Republic That's to like... win a few key victories and kept the Sith from total triumph. In desperation, we set a trap for the Dark Lord. Bastila was with the strike team that tried to capture Revan. As you probably know, she was there at Revan's end. That was nearly a year ago, but things have not improved. Malak has stepped in and assumed the mantle of Dark Lord for himself, though he's far from Revan's equal in strategy or tactics. Still, his fleet continues to grow in both ships and soldiers. If we do not find some way to stop the Sith soon, Malak will overwhelm us with sheer numbers. What can I learn from Revan's history? Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can fall to the dark side. You must always be on guard against the evil that dwells within you. Think hard upon this lesson. I'll think upon this, Master Dorak. May the Force be with you. Alright, let's talk to him again. Greetings, yeah. As chronicler, you... Where are the Academy's archives? This facility is a training academy. The archives here are restricted to those who have attained the rank of Master. We must protect over-eager Padawans from being exposed to dangerous knowledge. Like the many, the pursuit of many, knowledge is a noble many goal, Sith holocrons. But there are some things that require the wisdom of a master to truly understand. You should ponder the history of Revan. It contains many lessons you may need if we hope to defeat Malak and the Sith. Don't worry, I'll find a way to set this up. Your confidence is admirable, but you must guard against pride and arrogance. These lead to the dark side. Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can. Yada yada yada. Thank you, All right, and there's Vandar to uh, Takare. Good evening, apprentice. I trust your training goes well. I my training is progressing quite well. I have faith that you will achieve the rank of Padawan soon. Master Jar is most impressed with your progress. May the Force be with you, Apprentice. May the Force be with you, Apprentice. Uh, wow, well, I really butchered that one. Good evening, Apprentice. I seek knowledge of the Jedi Code. All Jedi must know Sorry. the Code. Which, by the way, this the is Steel Cannon, the Jedi Code. Order. Think and meditate on these truths, Apprentice. There is no, no emotion. emotion. There is, there is peace. peace. There is, there is no, no ignorance. ignorance. There is, there is no knowledge. knowledge. There is, there no, is no passion. passion. There, is there is serenity. serenity. There, there is no, no chaos. chaos. There is, there is harmony. harmony. There, there is, is no, no death. death. There is, there the, is force. the force. I have faith that you will achieve the rank of Padawan soon. Master Jar is most impressed with your progress. May the force be with you, apprentice. That is the Jedi Code. Even to this day, in new canon, in the Disney canon, it is still canon, the, the Jedi Code. Literally, because there is no motion, there is peace, is spoken by Obi-Wan in the, in the 2007... 2017 Battlefront 2 remake, which I may or may not record on this channel, though it would be the most the high the, mo the newest game I've ever played in this channel so far. So journal entry. You should hear in a journal entry. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the force. The Jedi Council of Dantooine tried to train you in the ways of the Jedi, ancient Jedi Order. After much training, your, your first task will be to learn the precepts of the Jedi Code. This code is the path of which all Jedi lead their lives. We also have a new quest of Candorous, too. You enjoy my Candorous or a skilled Mandalore mercenary. You know a little about it, however. So yeah, now you have three party members of the quest. With dialogue. Good evening, Apprentice. Alright, I'd like to ask you some questions. A Jedi must ever be seeking knowledge. What is it you wish to know? Well, can you tell me about Basila? Bastila will be a great Jedi someday. Even among the masters in the council, it is rare to find one so skilled in the art of battle meditation. Bastila was there when Revan was slain. Did you know that? Karth mentioned something about it. Bastila herself does not like to talk about it. She was accompanying the strike team that confronted Revan when the Dark Lord was destroyed. Her role in the death of such a promising young Jedi as Revan upset her greatly, but Bastila knew she had to set her personal feelings aside for the sake of the galaxy and the Republic. The Force is strong with her now, and without her skill in battle meditation, we would have lost this war long ago. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila, 
and for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. Is there anything else you would like to know? Is there anything you told me about Revan and Malak? I knew Revan as a promising young pupil. Revan was strong in the Force, but also headstrong and proud. Such traits are not unusual in a Padawan. Perhaps that was why I did not see the true extent of the danger. Many of the young Jedi admired Revan, including Malak. When Revan sought to challenge the Mandalorian, himself. Malak was the first to join the cause. And when Revan fell to the dark side, it was inevitable Malak would fall as well. So Revan was stronger than Malak? Or are you saying that Revan was responsible for Malak's fall? Revan was always the leader, the more powerful of the pair. When Revan fell, we had hoped the Sith threat was ended. But Malak quickly assumed Revan's role and has embraced the dark side power as fully as his old master ever did. Now, Malak leads the Sith Armada against the Republic. Hate and vengeance for his master's death draw Malak ever further down the path of the dark side fueling his powers until they surpass those of his old master. Only you and Bastila together can stop Malak now. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila and for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the force be with you. Is there anything else? Yes, uh, Master Rook doesn't seem to like me very much. Master Rook may seem harsh and critical, but he understands the dangers that lie in your path. He wants you and Bastila to be fully prepared when you finally face Lord Malak. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila and for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. Is there anything else you would like? I'll be going now. Very well. All right, now let's talk lastly to Master of Rook Lamar. I really do not like this guy. I really do not like this guy, mainly for half the stuff he did in the, well, the sequel. You'll find out why. I'm just gonna say that. Uh, this does more damage. Under bear blade. Probably there. Actually, no wait. It's actually better to swap them around. So you can hit things more. All right. I see you insist on wandering the halls of our enclave when you should be busy studying your lessons. My training is going well. It appears that soon you will achieve the rank of Padawan. Master Jar is most impressed with your progress, but I cannot help but wonder if you move forward too quickly. I see you... I have some questions. I suppose such desires are inevitable, though I fear you may seek knowledge for which you are not prepared. Yet I will do my best to guide your quest. Can tell, what can you tell me about Bastila? Bastilla? The young Jedi holds great promise and great danger. She can do much for both the Republic and the Council. Without her skill in battle meditation, the Sith Armada would have conquered the galaxy long ago. But despite her command of the Force, Bastilla is still young. She is a Jedi, but she has not attained the rank of Master. The Council would do well to remember this before we lay the fate of the galaxy on her slender shoulders. You would do well to focus more closely on your lessons. The Force is strong with you, but you need training and guidance in the ways of the Jedi, lest you suffer a fate similar to that of Revan. All right. I see you in... Uh, anything tell me about Revan and Malak? Revan was once a promising Padawan. But ever eager to learn more about the Force, Revan sought knowledge of ancient Sith magics, foolishly ignoring the dangerous lure of the dark side. When the Mandalorian invasion came, Revan seized the opportunity it presented. Many Jedi flocked to the Outer Rim to follow the charismatic young knight, and many fell under the sway of the dark side. And the Outer Rim to corrupt Revan. I do not believe Revan and Malak were corrupted on the Outer Rim. They had begun their journey down the Dark Path long before the Mandalorian threat appeared. Here on Dantooine, they discovered a sinister cave, a place where the strength of the Dark Side overwhelms the light. Perhaps this discovery was what first corrupted them. 
Or perhaps they sought the cave out because they were already corrupted. Whatever the explanation, the Order was unable to turn them back to the light. Had the Council taken more decisive action in this matter, perhaps Revan and Malak could have been stopped. But in this we failed. You would do well to focus more closely on your lessons. The Force is strong with you, but you need training and guidance in the ways of the Jedi, lest you suffer a fate similar to that of Revan. All right. And one last question for him. I like to ask some questions. Blah, blah, blah. You often seem angry to me, Master Brook. Have I displeased you? If you find me overly critical, perhaps it is because you do not fully understand what is at stake. For 15,000 years, the Republic has brought peace and stability to the galaxy. Now the Republic may be destroyed because we, the Jedi, have failed them. Revan and Malak were paragons of the ideals the Order seeks to uphold. Yet they succumbed to the temptations of the dark side. When Revan fell, Malak took up the mantle of Dark Lord of the Sith. Should Malak be stopped, what is to stop another Jedi from taking his place? This is the burden we masters must carry. Only through strict training and relentless lessons can we prevent the Dark Master from being reborn. That is why the Order can brook no failure in our apprentices and pupils. That is why I can accept nothing but perfection from you. You would do well to focus more closely on your lessons. The Force is strong with you, but you need training and guidance in the ways of the Jedi, lest you suffer a fate similar to that of Revan. All right. Let's go and give the, uh, well, the last Jedi Master, uh, Zar Leston, the, the Jedi Code. Greetings, my young pupil. Your progress has been most remarkable so far. Are you here to continue your training in the ways of the Jedi? I want to ask some questions about Cesar. Questions about Revan and Malak. Few mention those names around here anymore, but I suppose it is just as dangerous to deny they were ever part of the Order. When I was still on Coruscant, Revan and Malak often came to me for additional training. In particular, Revan's hunger to learn seemed insatiable. I should have recognized this as a warning sign. But I perceive the young Padawan's lust for knowledge as simple exuberance and eagerness. Revan was my most promising pupil. One I felt sure would someday become a champion of the Jedi Order. Happened. The Jedi Order moved too slowly for Revan and Malak. We were too cautious in their eyes. They always sought to learn far quicker than their masters felt was prudent. It is one thing to understand a lesson. But to truly comprehend it takes a wisdom that only comes with time. Several years ago, when the Mandalorian threat first arose, Revan and Malak were eager to journey to the Outer Rim to defeat the enemy of the Republic. But the Council felt it best if we moved with care and caution. The true threat, the Council feared, had not yet revealed itself. But Revan would not be dissuaded. Charismatic and powerful, it was inevitable many of the Order would flock to Revan's seemingly noble cause. Malak was the first to join his closest friend. Others soon followed, many of our youngest and brightest, intent on saving the galaxy from the Mandalorian threat. They disobeyed the Jack. What happened to this noble mission? They were foolish to disregard the Council's wishes. I do not know what happened to Revan, Malak, and their followers on the farthest reaches of the Outer Rim. But something corrupted them. Their ideals became twisted, their spirits were tainted, and they fell to the dark side. There is a lesson in this, a lesson you would do well to take to heart. The dark side can corrupt even the most noble of Jedi. I will keep the lesson, Master Zar. You have learned much, yet there is much more for you to still understand. The way of the Jedi must be entered into with a clear and focused mind. When you feel that you are ready to continue your training, know that you can find me here. Hey. Greeting. I'm ready to continue my training. Soon your apprenticeship will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first you must prove yourself worthy. In the traditions and customs of our Order, as handed down from master to pupil for a thousand generations, you must successfully complete three tests before you earn your place among the Jedi. I'm ready for the test, Master Jack. 
These tests will see if you have truly mastered the training you have been given, both mental and physical. Upon completing these tests, you will pass from apprentice to Padawan and join in the ranks of the Jedi. First, I will test your knowledge of the Jedi Code. These tenets must always guide your actions. In everything you do, you must always be conscious of their wisdom. You must now prove you have a Jedi's understanding of the Code by completing these fundamental precepts of our Order. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is harm. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is harmony. Oh, no. There is serenity? There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. Oh, frick. There is... There is the force. You have learned your studies well, Apprentice. Oops, I got it right! It will be long before you are a full member of our order. But first, you must pass the second test. I passed it! And learn about the most <laughs> prized possession of a Jedi. I thought I got it wrong. The very symbol of our order. The lightsaber. The lightsaber is the traditional weapon of our order. It is oh, a symbol lightsaber. of a Jedi's skill, okay. dedication, and authority. And each lightsaber is as individual as the Jedi who wields it. The blade is made of pure energy, focused by polished crystals in the hilt. As the second test, each which Jedi is, must construct which, his way, lightsaber with his own hands. And now it this is, is one your thing time. Legends and canon. Speak with Master Dorak, and he will guide you through the choosing of a crystal. Uh, this is different between Legends and Canon. Lightsaber crystals are very, very different. In Canon, lightsaber crystals are kind of chosen. Or they kind of, lightsaber crystals are kind of like sentient and very connected to the Force, is that they choose the user. And the color is chosen automatically. That's not the case in here. Lightsaber crystals are different. They don't choose their, their user. Lightsaber crystals and they all, like uh, laser crystals are kind of a natural crystal. Heck, a lightsaber crystal could be anything, honestly. A na like it just has to be a it has to be compatible with the lightsaber flow, the power source. Heck, a crate dragon's pearl can be a lightsaber crystal. But uh, yeah, called color crystals basically can be interchanged. Heck, if you a Jedi if they have technically two different color crystals can actually swap them out in order to have different colors. Pretty cool. Very different from the show, the, the automatic color choosing that the uh, jet, the uh, newer cannon goes for. I don't know which one I like more, uh, versus the which one or the other. I kind of have a preference to the color crystals because that's what I grew up with, but I do like the other one which Disney has. Heck, it actually adds in a little bit of, bit of other lore with the Sith and how they use their crystals, which is something which uh, I actually do like how the new cannon does it because of how well attuned to the Force they are. In, in old canon, the, the Sith never had access to the, the Ilum, like Ilum where lightsaber crystals are mined. So, in order to get access to lightsaber crystals, they had to synthetically make theirs from the dark side of the Force. So, basically, almost all lightsaber crystals are fake for, this, for the Sith, except for a select few, because the red crystal is the rarest of all lightsaber crystals next to white basically being entirely a rare phenomena, but one that's actually is choosable. Look at Adigalia. Heck, Vader himself had a natural red one. But the thing is, is that uh, in new canon, instead of the instead of having to find a red crystal or or create their own, they have to to kill a Jedi and bleed their crystal with dark side emotion. Literally corrupting the, the force crystal. Turning it into a force, a, uh, a ball of Sith crystal, which is then implanted into a Sith lightsaber and used. All right, so this is how to describe the the, Je the three Jedi classes, which is what we're going to be choosing now. Basically, there are three uh, there are three Jedi classes. Here's the best way to explain them: <clears throat> soldier. God, <laughs> this is the soldier. This is the uh, the smuggler or the. Uh, forgot his name. The smuggler. This is the scout. Yep, that's it's basically this. Yep, it's it's them again. Yeah, they, they were kind of interesting. Ah, they're kind of lazy with that. 
but let's go with each of them. The Guardian is basically the soldier, and they basically battle against the force of evil and the dark side. They focus on combat training and masterful use of the lightsaber. They basically they give 10 fatality, level 4 force points, level, level slow, skill progression, fast feet progression. Next is the Consular, which is honestly, in my opinion, the best. Then, Consular seeks to bring balance to the universe. They focus less on physical combat and more on mental discipline in order to augment their mastery of the Force. Base attributes and 6 vitality, level 8, force points, uh, level, slow skill progression, slow feet progression. But, what they don't mention, fast force uh, progression. Meaning that they, that they gain force at a very fast rate, meaning that they'll get force powers extremely fast and will have to be very well at using them. Next up is the Sentinel. This one is a mixture of the Guardian and the Counselor. Jedi Sentinels ferret out deceit and injustice, bringing them to light. They strike a balance between the, the physical and mental disciplines of the Jedi Order. Vitality 8, level 6 force points, level average skill progression, slow feet progression. So, so, and you can see this is a statistical one. Guardian's best at, at health, worse at the force. Counselor's best at the force, low, worse at the health, and the Sentinel is a good middle ground. Most of the time, I think I think I'm gonna go with what I think is the canonical. But by the way, uh, main character is all three again. By the way, ah, master of combat, a master of, of bringing up seat, and a master of force. He sees great promise in you, as do I. The time has come for you to choose the color of your lightsaber. This color also reflects right. your demeanor and position. I actually won't order. be choosing this one. I will be doing it through what I think will be what is chosen through this. What color? What, what, what colors are there? Blue is the color of the Jedi Guardian. This Jedi battles against the forces of evil and the dark side. They Frick. focus more on combat training and use of the lightsaber. Yellow is the color of the Jedi Sentinel. This Jedi ferrets out deceit and injustice, bringing it to light. They focus less on combat and more on other skills and abilities. Green is the color of the Jedi Consular. The best Jedi this Consular Jedi pod. seeks to bring Jedi. balance to the universe. They mediate between other groups, using their powers to end conflict and preserve peace. Now, personally for me, I want to be... Uh, if, if I was going to choose a class for this playthrough, it would be the Guardian, but personally for me, as a person, uh, I would probably be a Counselor. It's just... It, or Consular. Or maybe a Sentinel, I don't know, but... Anyways, because I've always felt like the truth. But anyways, uh, let's choose... Indeed, we shall see. I will now ask you questions, and your responses this is will indicate important. which class you lean most towards. A woman and her small child are beset by a desperate-looking group of thugs. They're menacing her with weapons, and she screams to you for help. What do you do? Okay. Help them flee. Honestly, for me, I would probably help them flee or attack the thugs, but this is the one of the Jedi is good, but I would help them flee. Indeed. Very well. On to the next question. You are in combat with a dark Jedi allied with the Sith. There is a pause in the combat. What do you do? Find out why he tried to turn to the dark side and try to turn him in. Or turn him. Yes, I suspected as much. Now for the next question. There is a locked door, and your goal lies... Uh, what do you do? I should, okay. So, uh... In real life, I would knock. But considering this, Revan has no security skill. Smash the door down. I am beginning to see a pattern don't, here, don't, don't, don't. I have a feeling about <laughs> what you would be best at. But first, the final question. You are the head of an enclave on a contested world. The Dark Jedi have infiltrated and are causing unrest across the planet. What do you do? Coordinate with the planetary governor trying to identify the infiltrators. Yes, I thought as much. As I suspected, you would be most suitable as a Jedi Consular. Which color and path do you believe yourself most suited to, Apprentice? I will... Hmm. I will do... As he recommended, but personally, again, now personally, the blue. I want to continue on the soldier, but we do need speech skill. We really need speech skill because what they meant, what they didn't mention, is that actually it lowers your speech skill and gives you a ton more points. Like slow feet pro uh, skill progression, my butt. They have good skill skill pro progression because they're basically just smugglers. Anyways, well, with a lightsaber. Hmm. 
I'm gonna go with Cliff Guardian. Here is a blue crystal for your lightsaber. Go speak to Master Jar again, and he will instruct you in how to construct it. And we get a new item in a, in a level up for Revan. Oh, Evan. Sorry. E well, for Evan Wrath. Sorry again. I mixed up the names. Anyways, we get one point, which now we can put in for speed for free, which we'll all go into for later. Because for speed, we need as much as possible, and all of our skills cost one except for computer use, stealth. And repair and security. But it's persuaded and lowered, which woo! And we also have proficiency in lightsabers and a Jedi defense. Uh, we already have Master 2 epic fighting, we missed that, so we could get more empathy, we'd get Flurry mastered up. But, as this uh, shows, our sword, we have weapon proficiency, lightsabers, just to use lightsabers, and then we can upgrade these to get max lightsabers. We also now have access to new things, like Force Jump, which is a Jedi Guardian skill. Okay, which also we need to be level 6 and level 12 Guardian, which I played to master it. The Jedi knows that if diplomacy fails, combat must be swift and decisive. When an opponent is at range and is targeted with a standard melee light, uh, lightsaber melee attack, this feat allows the Guardians to make a series of quick force jumps and roll to close the distance almost instantly. This feat is automatic when wielding a lightsaber and targeting opponents with a standard melee attack from more than 10 meters away. The Jedi must appear that sights the opponent's you know, using this feat or, or, special, or, or special attack and negates this ability. So yeah. And we also have Jedi Sense, which the Jedi develops a connection to the Force, allows we can make close defense, and we also have death and the Force Sensitive. Jedi training affects each Padawan uniquely, allowing them to grow in ability while addressing the personal flaws. On rare occasions, however, exceptional individuals open doors to strength they did not know they had. This feat represents the heightened connection to the Force, unpreviously unseen in the newly trained Jedi. This feat grants 40 additional Force points to the character's total base total. Alright, let, I would think I'm gonna get... Also Jedi Defense. This feat allows a character with a, a equip laser to flight blaster bolts at any time. When a character is fired upon, the opposed attack roll is made against the, uh, the attacker. Okay, yeah. Basically, basically we get extra defense. I might get advanced Jedi defense, which basically boosts the R up to a plus three, which is insane, and a plus six, making us basically immune to blaster bolts. But I think I think flurry is best. And we get force powers. Cure. Actually, speed. We probably get speed. Because we already have a character for Cure, so force speed up to max right away would be great, because seriously, this is amazing. Uh, well, oh, we have two. Okay. Uh, let's get Cure and speed. And accept. Ta-da! And let's, uh, net level of mission, of course. Let's get attribute, uh, dex. Skills. Recommended. No! Alright. Demotion, stealth, awareness. Alright, now. Let's treat a skill, treat injury. Now let's stealth more. Alright. And feats. Uh, let's hit dueling up, or should I get... Uh, I could get armor for Shinji so I can get Shinji to put better armor. Hmm. Maybe implants. Implant level. And eh, dueling Kali's better. Okay, extra attack is good. And Karth, we leveling up you. We'll level up your... Why is everything like this? Anyways. To level up your intelligence. Uh, let's level up your dex. Uh, skills. Uh, tree injury. Always. And feet. Always. 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 Always boosting your hit. Alright. So. Let's talk with Master's Jar to learn our final ah, thing. Good. Lightsaber. Now oh, I that you have to... selected your crystal, we shall begin the construction of your <laughs> lightsaber. Alright. Let's do some lightsaber construction and build our newest weapon to our to our arsenal. Also, let's use the prototype fire a fire blade for a while because of uh, us being a dual wielder. But we have our lightsaber crystal. Our lightsaber. We also have no power crystal, so it's gonna be say we could. Okay. Traditionally associated with the Jedi, the lightsaber is a devastating weapon and difficult to master. Properties can vary with the type of, uh, of focusing crystal using construction. Giving you anything from increased damage to stunning to doing more ion damage, yada yada yada. But the facet of crystal used in the construction of lightsaber, it glows faintly with inner blue light. Now, here's the one thing. Now, I will not be always keeping it blue. Many times during the game, I will be changing the lightsaber's uh, color crystal due to certain things in the plot, or certain things like with cannon, or just certain things that are just better lightsaber crystals. But anyways, we got our one, our light, our blue lightsaber. Boom, boom. Yes, it looks cool. And we'll also get a sword on the side. This is not balanced. 
this balance. Alright. Ish! And... Well, you got a, when you get a second lightsaber, I'm gonna ch uh, change it around. But anyways, let's talk to Jar. You have done extremely well in constructing your lightsaber, Apprentice. Your crystal seems to have been set perfectly. It is rare indeed for that to happen the first time one constructs their lightsaber. These crystals are very rare, found only in certain mm. caves or strong all in enemies. the Force. By adding crystals to your lightsaber, you can alter or enhance its properties. There have even been unconfirmed rumors of certain Force-sensitive caves here on Dantooine mm. that That's may hold these crystals. Well, I can I can find crystals on Dantooine? It is a rumor only. I do not know if there's any truth in it, but there you must learn fire. first to use it and take care when drawing it. Your lightsaber identifies you as a member of the Jedi Order. With such recognition comes honor and respect, and the attentions of dangerous enemies. The Sith and Dark Jedi will seek to destroy you, Apprentice. And you must prove yourself yeah. worthy in battle against a foe who also wields a lightsaber. Are you ready to face the final challenge, Apprentice? I'm ready to face the third trial. For every Jedi, the threat of the dark side is always present. You must truly understand this before you are accepted into the Order. You must see the corruption of the dark side for yourself. Even here on Dantooine, there are places where the dark side holds Now, this is about a fun fact. This is one of the reasons I want to hold on here with your Jedi level. Their the ancient level grove more once Jedi. used for deep meditation by the Jedi is now tainted. A wave of darkness perverts the, the region around it. The Cath Hounds in the area have become savage and ruthless. They have become a threat to the settlers. A threat yeah, the Jedi have promised to stop. What do you have me do, Master Jar? The Cath Hounds are but a symptom <coughs> of the true problem. You must journey into the grove and confront the true source of the darkness. That is your task. You have no other guidance? You know more than you're telling me. I can say no more. Some things you must see for yourself. None of the other Jedi at the Academy are permitted to help you in this but task. I've asked a lot. But remember this, my young apprentice. A Jedi acts with patience and care, and those on the dark path are not always lost forever. The dark side still taints the ancient grove. Your lessons cannot continue until the spreading corruption of the dark side has been stopped. This is your task, apprentice. May the Force be with you. All right. So now we have a new quest: the Jedi Trials. We must go to cleanse the grove. So. I love doing that. If you have questions, I want to speak to you, Bass, a lot. You know, it's probably best to confide in those dreams of me. You know, why we're having the same dreams. All right, let's head out. Let's head out into the into the well, the, the whole that way. Greetings, apprentice. Oh, so. Though I understand you shall not have that lowly title much longer. Master Jar tells me that your progress has been remarkable. Soon he feels you will attain the rank of Padawan. Then you will truly be a full-fledged Jedi. How are you enjoying your training? Alright. It's civil to put it worthwhile. With power comes responsibility. And only by learning discipline and sacrifice can we truly learn to master our potential. I wish you luck in your training, Apprentice. There is much you must yet learn. May the force be with you. May the force be with you too, Belaya. Alright, Jedi Droid. The council has decreed you may come and go as you please. Alright. And welcome to Dantooine proper. A full on, it's a grassy land covered in flying manta rays. And a broken skybox. Anyways. And a broken skybox there. Hello, Nemo. It is good sometimes to stop and reflect on the beauty of nature and the force. I am sorry. Hello, I tend to get carried away. I do not believe we have met, Apprentice. My name is Nemo. Is there something I can help you with? I've been given a task by the council. Indeed. What is it you would like from me? 
Uh, do you know the Tainted Grove? The council has told you nothing of the grove. I know it is tainted by the dark side. Do not be so quick to judge circumstances about which you are ignorant. Not everything may be as transparent as you would believe. The grove can be found to the south and east in the plains, but be wary of cathounds. They may be agitated by the power in the grove. Is there something else I can help you with? I have a question about Dantling. Very well. What is it you wish to know? Where can I find a store? Ah, you can find two stores here at the Enclave. Aerotech has opened both a general supply store and a droid facility, and I think you will find their products quite good. The supply store is run by a Twi'lek named Kratis Yorkel, a talkative being with a big chip on his shoulder, but generous despite that. The droid repair facility is managed by Carol Carr, a bit brusque perhaps, but a good being nonetheless. We have shared many a game of Bazaar in the small hours of the morning. Is there something else I can help you with? Uh, I'll just know more about you. About me? I am truly flattered. What is it you wish to know? Who are you? As I have said, I believe, my name is Nemo. I am here by the will of the Jedi Council. You are a Jedi? Indeed, my young friend, that I am. I have served the Council for many years, and have seen many apprentices pass through this enclave. Are you a member of the Council? I think perhaps you place an undue importance on rank and hierarchy. Understandable, but regrettable also. We each serve in our place, high or low. Is there something else I can help you with? Like no more about you? About me? Hi. What do you do here? I am here by the will of the Jedi Council. I serve the good and, hopefully through that, the people of the Republic. Yes, no. Is there something else I can help you with? Right, I have a question about, uh, I'm going to see going now. I hope... Speak to Gar. Oh, greetings, friend. I think I can safely assume you are a member of the Jedi Order. Has the Council agreed to hear our petition? I am sorry, I do not know. Oh, I see. I am mistaken. How may I be of assistance? Who are you? My name is Gar. Me and my fine oh. wife, Rilke, here... A pleasure. ...live on one of the northern farms. But the cat hounds and the Mandalorian problem has been getting really bad of late, and we're here to ask the Jedi Council to help. Recently, the cat hounds have been acting much more aggressively. They've even attacked some of the settlers. Those Mandalorian raiders have been milking the outlying farms dry, too. I hear John got hit really bad. Too bad about his daughter. I'm not sure exactly what the council will do about it, but we need some help with this. I only hope they'll listen to me. Is there anything else you require? Mandalorians here? Ever since the Republic beat them years ago, little groups have been roaming all over the place. With the Sith invasion, the Republic doesn't have the manpower to hunt them down. The Jedi are even worse off because Malak has been hunting them specifically. They're worried that he might even be supporting these raiders. So, don't want to face them directly. That puts us in a kind of hard situation. Is there anything else I can help you with? So what can you tell about Dantooine? Well, as you can see, Dantooine is mostly plains and grassland, but it has a nice hearty soil. A lot of new people have come in the last generation or so. Mm -hmm. well, the ones you'll most likely hear about are the Sandrals and the Matalis. Big, wealthy landowners, both of them. But Alan Matali and Nurik Sandral just can't seem to get along. Oh, and so now this Alan game? wants to get the council to do something. Oh, crap. Do something? Has something happened? Well... From what I hear, it started about a week ago. See, Nurik's son, Cassis, is an archaeologist. Bright lad, too, but he disappeared. 
Nurk, of course, blamed Alan, but even he didn't take it before the council. But now, Alan's son, Shen, has disappeared as well. And no one knows where he's gone. Alan blames Nurik. He thinks he's kidnapped his son. I don't know exactly what he wants to ask the council, but from what I know of Alan, he's probably going to be after blood. Is there anything else you require? I must be going now. Farewell, then. May the force be with you. Is that how it goes? Yeah. May the force be with you. But I have a feeling that was not the... Tim. That was, uh, that was the actual actor. That wasn't his character, that was, that was, he, but anyways, here's John. Jedi? How long can you people continue to sit by and claim you protect us, protectors? Ha! You sit in your enclave safe from the Mandalorians while we suffer. What are you talking about? Those Mandalorian brutes have killed my daughter. They came to our land demanding our livelihood. But Ilsa, my Ilsa, said no. They, they killed her? There was nothing I could do. Too many of the Mandalorians and their Duro's allies. I've come here to ask you, please, Master Jedi, stop these raiders and get revenge for my daughter. I'll protect you and your fellow settlers. Uh, I'll protect you and your fellow settlers. I will give you all I have. Just please, annihilate them from the face of this planet. <laughs> and suddenly, we have gone the way of Revan and have immediately started atta attacking the Mandalorians as Evan, the Jedi Knight. <laughs> also, hello, can you? Yes, you, you are a Jedi. I am Revan Lation, part of my time and my time needs. What happened to you? I am a victim, the refugee, yes. I fled. But my world was a city. They bombed my world, destroyed, yes. They scoured the parts of it, boiled the oceans. Is it bad? Yes. But I run here, find the hero here. Oh no, they take me in. One of the rebellion. Yes. But fights for those I win. Not to blame, of course, no. This is the strong, destroy all who oppose them, yes. My thanks to you have. In your order, is there anything else you require? I must be going now. Yes, yes, Jedi is what I intend to. Good day, my friend. Jedi friend. Alright, so that's all for the quests that we can get from the outside of the building. There's still more quests we can find, but I'm not sure if I'm able to do any today. I can get them all on, on, on us, but I can't just start them because I have to leave to, you know, throw them us. Oh, hey, that's a cat town, by the way, up there. There's Ellis. Greetings, young Jedi. I wonder if you could assist me. I seem to have lost my companion, you see? A companion? We were working on my farm to the north of here. I was working in the garden outside, and he was working inside. I heard the door to the house open, but not close. I went to see and found it wide open. I searched everywhere and could not find him. I worry so much. I need him back so badly. I wonder if he... Could he have been kidnapped? Is it possible? Maybe it was the Mandalorians. Or maybe Cathounds. But no, cat hounds are not intelligent enough to open doors. Although they have been more vicious lately. No, it must have been someone who could open the door by himself. When you think of it, the door was locked. So I want to bypass them? Because I want to open it from inside? Well, yes, it could have. But he had no reason to run away. His programming... Your missing companion is a droid? Well, yes. He is a droid. But he is very valuable to me all the same. He's the last piece of my poor passed away husband I have left. He is very dear to me, my precious is. I don't know what I'd do without him. He's the only companionship I have on all of Dantooine. You live alone with this droid. Or what exactly do you use him for again? He is a personal assistance droid. My husband was a genius at constructing droids. He made this one capable of taking care of me for the rest of my life. As the last legacy of my husband, for my own personal ease of mind, I need him back. His absence gnaws at me like a gaping wound. Wow, she really misses her droid, doesn't she? Mm. Please, I beg of you, <laughs> return my droid to I me. I want to work with her droid for Anyways, I'll help you find your droid. Thank you. Thank you, Master Jedi. If you find him, Wait, was that too? please send him home to me. I need him so much. And then we have Elise's quest. The man, uh, which is the missing companion. 
You met at least Montague Montagain, who has lost her companion, her droid companion. It's all that she has left of her late husband, and she was to find him. She was apparently kidnapped from her home, and she's been searching for him ever since. She misses him very much. Yeah, I think we know what she was using him for. I think we all know. It's kind of obvious. Me, anyway, a dumb LARP. Greeting, fellow sentient. I notice you are heavy, not heavily armed, or at least not heavily armed. Enough. Please let me myself to interest myself. I am a dumb, a simple merchant with a much noble purpose. Purpose? Yes, purpose. Settlers and noble humans have danced made have been pillaged by cathounds, raiders, and, no and fearsome troubles of late. It is much too sad to see things happen to such people as this. Therefore, I mean, this, much of, this is my mission to be. Uh, you're trying to sell me something, aren't you? To overcome this with their troubles, they must be able to defend themselves. Therefore, I offer the highest quality of weapons at the lowest of prices. Here, offering you to lay the weaponry at low, low prices. How can the incentive pass up such a bargain? They cannot. Weaponry it is, what are you to have? What would you like to be done this fine day? See what you're selling. Yes, yes, you're the best you can find anywhere in the world. And, and best in the world, he is not lying. He sells some pretty good gear. For one, the, the, Sinig, the Sinigar war suit. A weapon that was a sonic damage. After the Great Hyperspace War, which is the which is the war where basically the Jedi first discovered the Sith species. Uh, well, after the Sith species split, up, split off from the Jedi uh, years ago. Uh, basically, where they fought against uh, Naga Sado and his uh, his Sith rival. I forget which one what his name is was, but I know it's Naga Sado. Basically, there's an old called Naga Shadow, but it's not. But anyways. Uh, and it's one of the important, uh, big events that happened in the past. Uh, a thousand years ago, the heirs of the Empress Tita militarized their world and industry, a legacy that produced battle armor still sought after to this day. Then there's Cassus Fett, the ancestor of Django and, uh, Jeng uh, no Django, I almost called him Jenga Fett, uh, <laughs> and which gives no dexterity bonus but a really high de defense. It was just cold and fire and sonic, and it's an upgradable weapon. Armor. This will be good for a good Mandalorian character of ours. This armor of Cassus Fett, the most wanted man in known space, famous for killing the captain of the flagship Republic frigate at the Battle of Jaga Cluster. He is presumed dead. Cassus Fett also appeared in the uh, in the Kotor comics as the one as the uh, this one of the generals of Mandalorian of Mandalore, the Ultimate. And there's the Brazium light armor. Light my butt, it's medium. This model, this molded armor is made of better materials than a standard issue, uh, military standard issue, but it's still relatively cheap and easy to mass produce, making it ideal for life militias and the like. And then a light repeating blaster, a heavy weapon. This weapon fight allows the user to fire more quickly than usual, decreasing increasing his chances of survival without drastically changing the amount of equipment he would normally carry. This sells some good grenades, some mines, and a flamethrower. So, yeah, let's sell. We can sell Devex military suit, but I'm not going to. The Volcar shoulders. Uh, sh let's sell the Viral Blade. Or the Viral Actually, keep it for now. Because someone could use it. <coughs> Excuse me. I think since this is, uh, yeah. Uh, Ordo's heavy repeater. We could sell this. Uh, we could sell some. We could already sold some frag grenades. So we've been clutching grenades. I don't really use them. I use them when I can have one that kills. Anyways, Carl Van's pretty good. Plasma's real. Ow. Okay. Ow, ow. Our lamp fires are important. So. Sell our adrenal alacrity, adrenal stamina. Keep the adrenal the battle stem, because really good. Sell the minor gas mine. Keep all these. Shield disruptor, I'll sell one. Alright. We'll learn more about it down in the lark. But anyways, head forward and you can see a cat pound up there. Anyways, head forward. And they'll roar at us. And they'll charge at us! Alright, so first up first, you want to use first of speed. No, first of speed, armor. Armor! Oh yeah, armor. We can't wield armor with four speed. You want to take it, you clip normal clothes. Alright, so we are now upgraded. We just want to chop with this. Because now we have the. Because basically, we, we, because of how armor works in this game. We literally, literally need to have no armor in order to use force powers. Certain ones that don't come from the hands. Force speed is pretty important. So that's why I'm gonna put it. Charge! 
Cathode. I should've used... Should've used a regular attack. Ow. Okay, we're, we're pretty tanky anyway without it. Okay, let's, uh... Attack! Huh! Okay, and uh, they're attacking, uh, everyone. Okay, they're attacking mission. Right. And down they go. Down they go! I still quote that to this day. Down they go! And, uh, power attack and that's glory. We are actually taking a lot of damage. Let's just close. Alright, let's give Karth that Ishani uh, war suit. Uh huh. Uh. Actually, let's give it to Mission because it's probably better for. Alright, there we are. And we'll switch to Revan yes. well, to Evan, sorry. Keep getting me confused. What? Alright. Heal yourself. Okay, I can't do much because I have to leave it about uh get ready in about five minutes, so. So I'm just gonna kill some cat pounds, get some action beeps here. Alright. Down you go. Oh no 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 no. There we are. Huh. Ah! I'm fine. I'm taking very little damage. Again, Master Flurry basically is just free spam. You get no downside from using it. I forget how pink uh, F is. Almost called the wrong name again. We're not going to have the most force power for a while, but... Okay. Alright. So we have the full map up. Or almost at all. So that's... That's the cave we can't enter yet. That's, uh... That's, uh, the same door where Malak and Rev and Rev went into. So I cannot enter in there yet. So instead, let's head over this way. To the Mattel grounds, or the Mattel Tale. All right, attack. Those are for HP, and there's a third attacking the cat now. So, okay. Thank you, Dex. I'm just gonna say that Dex is helping so much. <coughs> Down you go. And we're gonna kill the entire wild, the entire uh, livestock of the entire area. Slaughter. Stop attacking mission! How'd you like that? You asked for this! Maybe it's totally good, but. Can't speak, Karth. Are you sure? Are you, sure? Are you away? Oh, you're okay, Karth. I don't think they can legitimately ask for, uh, like, object to asking for something. Okay, so. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Thought of the cat homes. Next time we'll do more questing and interesting quests. So. Kill, kill, kill the cat hounds for EXP. For EXP, and we'll cure. Here. Cure's pretty good, honestly, I'm just gonna say that. And heal. Seriously. Full party is now getting two uses on that thing that recharges, even though we're not using much. Pretty darn good, I'd say so myself. And I think it charges fast too out of combat. Like, look. And we can almost use full heal. Right. I tend to spam force powers, by the way, just to warn ya. Mm -hmm. 
Anyways, we can talk, we can speak to the Motala Droid, before we end the episode. You'll know when the episode has to end when you can alarm. This is private property. <coughs> Are you trespassing on this estate? Oh, sorry, are we going now? Only those on official family business are permitted within the estate. These settlers have come to Dantooine seeking privacy. Perhaps we should respect their wishes. Hmm. Hmm. Door. I mean, uh, I can't do anything with that, so... Get it over here. Past there is an interesting side quest, though. Past this, uh, little bit of land. I know, it's getting past one of these bridges that I've uh, Somewhere. It's a very interesting side quest. Probably one of my favorite side quests in the game. Yep, the, oh, nope, there's the Duros. Warriors well, are costing a farmer. You've been holding out of this kid. If you haven't given us enough money, I guess we're gonna have to take it out of you piece by piece. No, please! Take my wife and children instead. Anything! Wow! <laughs> Wife and children. A-holes, like both of them. <laughs> Alright, you die now. Okay, let's stop at the battle. Bless you, Johnny. I know. Alright, and down with the Mandalorians. And nice, we shot him to death. Okay. So down they went. So we killed the so we killed some of the Mandalorian one of the Mandalorian raiders attacking the attack group. But we have not met their most powerful members yet, as they say. There are more Mandalorians out there. We just attacked one ra ra raiding party. There are still way more out there. But I'm gonna have to end this episode. Whether you did get a new weapon though, the blaster cube carbine. The blaster carbine, if I can find it. Yes. Created initially for for Gungus X weapons, blaster carbines rifles have become very popular in recent years, helped by competing by falling prices due to comp competition from other companies. So I have to end this episode, sadly enough. Next time we'll have to play Star Wars Kotor. We're going to completely we're gonna we're gonna continue through Dantooine, doing a bunch of side quests, defeating a bunch of enemies. And hopefully investigating whatever the heck that disturbance was. Well, in the in the uh well in the sanctuary. See you guys then. Have a great day. Bye bye.